Hey there and welcome to another painting video tutorial. My name is Matt and in this video I'm going to show you how to use color to create the illusion of depth in the second phase of my painting process, the sculpture phase. Roll that intro. Whenever I create a new painting, I paint in three distinct layers. As you would have seen in my last video, the first layer is called the blocking. This is where I use big brushes and create a map of the painting with very little to no detail. The second phase I call the sculpture phase, and in this layer I'm still not interested in sharp detail, but rather vary my tones to sculpt or model the form of the subjects in the scene. Understanding atmospheric perspective and how to use color to mimic it are paramount to creating a believable landscape. As always, I start with the sky. Here I'm deepening the blue tones and creating more of a rich hue. In addition, I create a gradient moving from top to bottom with deeper blues at the top and lighter tones at the bottom. Then I start to shape the clouds. I want the clouds to be wispy and light, so I go in with a light blue-gray color achieved with ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and quinacridone magenta mixed with some titanium white. And I'm constantly blending my edges with the broad side of that dagger brush. Then I begin to refine the color on the distant peaks. I found that in my block in I went dark and warm too quickly, so here I lighten the distant layer with a sort of lavender color. Then I come in with the next layer and add a rich blue to it. For that color I'm using the same mix as I did for the clouds, just with a higher ultramarine blue content. Then I blend the mist into the peaks to create a soft edge along the bottom. Moving forward, I deepen my tone with ultramarine blue and a touch more burnt umber, and I vary my tone slightly with titanium white. Against the warmer gray that it sits over, these blues appear way too saturated, but as I trust the process and continue forward, it appears more natural. Next, I paint in the shadows on the main peak on the right. I create a nice map for the topography of this mountain, but as I take a step back, I realize that it's a bit too detailed and is throwing off the perspective of the scene. So as I layer my highlights over it, I blend those edges slightly to create more of a soft shape. And as you can see, for almost all of the sculpting layer, I'm using a quarter inch bristle dagger brush. I love this brush and can get a wide variety of different marks out of it. Perfect for sculpting form into mountains, trees, and grass. I like the idea of having these distant lakes in view to give more of a sense of depth and form to this otherwise monotonous area. In the block in though, I went a little bit too big with those shapes, so I mark where the new ones will go and vary my tones around them, lightening slightly in comparison to the mountain behind it. Then, once I finish this area, I go back in with a lighter tone and mark in the highlights of the sun glistening on the lakes. And as I continue forward, I use the same strategy as the mountain on the right to block in this middle peak. Here, I draw in my shadows with a deep dusk blue and round on the form of the mountain. Then, I layer over it with highlights and blend those together. This peak is further forward than the last, so I decide to keep some of that sharper detail in it. I still decide, however, to blend out the base of the mountain to give a greater sense of depth. Using fragmented brush strokes, I mark in the shadows on the hills on the left, using varying blue tones, then layer over that with a dull green, achieved with ultramarine blue, titanium white, and yellow ochre. As I mix greens down into the blues, I add a touch of phthalo green, and it really makes the hills come alive. Then I sketch in where my shadows will go moving further left and follow that same process. Deep blue shadows first and then lighter green highlights over that. I decide that for the sculpting stage, I actually quite like where the trees and bushes are at. So I only vary my tones and light angles slightly and move on straight to the grass. I thought long and hard about how to break up this area. So what I decide to do is go in with a dark green and map in my shadows first. It's important to add bits and pieces of different tones in a painting where almost half of the total area is one subject, it's easy to get lazy and for this to become a boring area. You can see how I'm varying my tones and painting clumps of grass, not individual blades. I'm not trying to go too detailed yet. I'll save that for the next phase. Finally, to create more of a highlight to this form, I go in with a trimmed fan brush and blend strokes of lighter green in at the tops of some of the clumps of grass. 
After over 20 more hours of studio work, the sculpting layer is finished. Let's take a look at a time lapse of the second phase from the end of the block in to where it is now. Well, that just about does it. Thanks so much for watching this week's painting video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and if so, go ahead and give this video a like, and make sure you come back next week to see the third and last phase in my painting process, the detail phase. This is where I really break out the small brushes and begin to bring this painting to life. Before you go away, I've got some big news. This weekend, starting Friday, May 22nd, Friday, Friday, Friday. going through next Tuesday, the 26th, I'm running a Memorial Day sale on my website. By entering the code MEMORIAL15 at checkout, you can get 15% off prints and on plein air paintings. Prints of this landscape, the Appalachian Summer, are available on the site as well as loads of others, so don't forget to check that out. Lastly, if you want to see more videos just like this one, make sure you are subscribed through my YouTube channel so that you are the first to know when I post new content. As always, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook or through my website, www.artofmatthewkent.com. All of those links are in the description below. Thanks and happy painting.